In this video, we're going to learn how to use the fprintf function to display text to the command window. fprintf actually has two uses. The first use is to write data to a text file. It's a cool feature, but we won't be manipulating text files that much, so we can ignore it. What's more relevant is the second usage of fprintf. fprintf can print nicely formatted text to the command window. To use fprintf, we need to give it the text or data we need to print, optionally followed by variables which define the data. Although MATLAB's documentation is usually stellar, I think the fprintf documentation is slightly confusing for beginners. I find it more prudent to do examples, so let's just jump into MATLAB. Let's start out with a few basic examples. Suppose we want to print some text to the command window. We simply supply the message as the argument to fprintf. Upon running the code, we see the hello world appear in the command window. We encase the text with single quotes, so we made what's called a character vector. We can also encase the text with double quotes to make it a string. In general, it doesn't really matter if you use a string or character vector unless your message contains apostrophes, which we'll get into in a bit. There are also some internal differences between strings and character vectors, but that's beyond the scope of the course. For now, you can treat strings and character vectors equally. I chose to make this message a string just for fun. But now there's a slight problem. The chevron prompting the user for input appears immediately after the message is printed. Also, the hello again starts immediately after the hello world. It would look nicer if each message occupied its own line. We can do so by adding a backslash n to the end of each message. The backslashes indicate what's called an escape sequence. When MATLAB encounters an escape sequence, it changes the formatting of the message without printing anything. The backslash n tells MATLAB to create a new line. The backslash t tells MATLAB to insert a tab space. There are other escape sequences which we won't cover in this video, but I'll leave a link describing them in the description. When MATLAB reads the slash n here, it creates a new line, and the second fprintf message is created on that new line. Within the second fprintf command, we have the backslash t, so MATLAB will insert a tab separating the words hello and again. Then it creates two new lines upon reaching both backslash n's. Note that any blank spaces are printed. In the first fprintf command, we have a space separating the d and the backslash n. This will get printed to the command window. You obviously can't see it, but if you highlight the entire command window line, you'll see the blank space that gets printed. Normally, this isn't a problem if you're just printing stuff to the command window, but you may need to be conscientious of your spaces if you're doing more advanced stuff or if you're just a stickler for formatting. There's no space separating the n and the backslash n here, so you won't see the space if you highlight over the command window line. A common usage of fprintf is to print a message and a variable together. For instance, instead of just displaying the value contained in the variable, we might want to precede it with a message to provide context such as the value of x is blank or something like that. Thankfully, we can do that. We stored a character vector in the variable called name. The fprintf statement contains the slash t, so a tab space will be printed after this colon. The percent %s indicates what's called a conversion character. Like an escape sequence, conversion characters are special flags which tell MATLAB to print or format something in a very specific manner. Conversion characters start with the percent sign and are followed by a letter. The percent %s tells MATLAB to print a string or character array. But which string or character array are we printing? That's where the second input to the fprintf function comes in handy. Whenever you add a conversion character, you need to add whatever you want to print as an additional argument. In this case, we're telling MATLAB to print the value contained in the name variable when it encounters the percent %s. You can print as many things as you want. 
just be sure to supply an additional input for every conversion character you include. Here we have two conversion characters, so we need to supply two additional arguments. They will be printed in the order shown. When MATLAB reads this percent %s, it will print the value contained in the first language variable. Then the value of the second language variable will be printed upon reaching the second percent %s. This means the order in which you supply the additional arguments matters. If you swap the positions of female and male, the code will still run without any errors, but the sentence will no longer make grammatical sense. Notice that we chose to make the message a string instead of a character vector because we need to include apostrophes here, here, and here for grammatical reasons. When you create a string, you can include as many apostrophes within the string as you want. But since apostrophes themselves indicate the start and end of a character vector, they can't be used for grammatical purposes. If you do so, you might get some weird errors. In general, it's good practice to bundle a message with conversion characters. That way, if you need to change the value of a variable, you only need to make one change to your code. If we just hard-coded Jim and Pam into this sentence here and removed the conversion characters, the code would still print Jim and Pam if the male and female variables changed. This is really bad practice and should be avoided at all costs. Now let's print some numbers. We can embed numbers directly into a string or character vector. As I just mentioned, this is a bad habit because there might not always be 8 slices of pizza. Just as we did before, we can include conversion characters to make our code more robust. Notice our conversion character changed from %s to %d. The %d tells MATLAB to print an integer. This is appropriate for our example because 8 is an integer. But what if we have a decimal? Now we're using %f which tells MATLAB to print a floating point number, which is just the fancy computer word for decimal. When we run the code, we see a bunch of extra zeros in the command window. We can modify the percent %f to tell MATLAB how many decimals to print. This tells MATLAB to print at least six numbers, one of which is the decimal point, and one of which is beyond the decimal. The number 4.5 only requires three spaces, the four, the decimal point, and the 5. But since we told MATLAB to print at least 6 spaces, it will pad whatever is left over with blank spaces. This is why the formatting still looks a little bit weird. If we add a 0 in front of the 6, we can pad the leftover spaces with zeros instead. That's still not really what we want. Instead, why don't we just delete the 6, or just delete the 06 entirely? This says we want to print at least zero numbers, one of which is the decimal point and one of which is beyond the decimal point. Obviously, the number 4.5 occupies more than zero spaces, so the zero is essentially overwritten with however much space the number 4.5 needs. When we're doing math, we might need to print special symbols like the percent sign. Although the percent sign is used to delineate a conversion character, we can just add another percent immediately afterwards to tell MATLAB we want to print the percent character.
The double percent tells MATLAB to print the percent sign. This might help you express things like a percent change. Let's wrap things up by getting a little fancy. Suppose we've tracked how many apples, oranges, mangoes, and cherries we ate from January through March. We want to print that data in a nicely formatted table using fprintf. I've compiled the amounts of fruit eaten into the total fruit eaten matrix. We can inspect the total fruit eaten matrix by double clicking on the variable in the workspace. Each row contains a different fruit. fprintf can print matrices with ease too, but the tricky part might be formatting all the tabs and spaces. The first two fprintf statements are hopefully comprehensible by now, so I'll skip them. In this line, we have four conversion characters each separated by two consecutive tab escape sequences. Each conversion character prints the name of the fruit in the order in which they're fed to the fprintf statement. I'm using two consecutive tab spaces to provide ample spacing between each fruit name, which serves as a header in our makeshift table. The last fprintf statement prints the number of each fruit eaten. We have four conversion characters, all of which print differently formatted numbers. The first conversion character will print one decimal, the second will only contain integers, the third will print five decimals, and the last will print two decimals. Although we only have four conversion characters, we only have one additional input. That's because fprintf is smart enough to recognize that the total fruit eaten variable is actually a four row matrix. MATLAB scans down each column and prints each element one by one upon reaching a conversion character. The %1.1f will print the element in the first row and first column of the total fruit eaten matrix. The %d will print the element in the second row and first column, and so forth. This is a pretty fast way to print a data table. However, there are some specialized functions which also print a data table which I prefer, but that's beside the point. Perhaps the hardest part about fprintf is formatting the escape sequences. I had to play around with the backslash t's in these two fprintf statements to make the formatting look the way it does. It was definitely trial and error, and I encourage you to play around with the code to see if you can prettify the table even more, especially the weird mango entries. Like all things coding, experimentation on your own will help you better understand these concepts. See you next time.